I'm David with Revolution Golf Cars in Augusta, Georgia. Are you tired of water in your batteries? Are you tired of acid all over your floor in your garage? Today we're going to take this 2013 Club Car Precedent and take these lead acid batteries out of this car and convert it to lithium. We're going to use this Eco Battery Bundle. It's a 60 amp hour, 51 volt battery. It comes with the charger, the gauge for the dash, the charger receptacle, and the voltage reducer for all of your 12 volt accessories. Stay with us and watch this video. We're going to show you exactly how to do this installation so you can do it yourself. Okay, so the first step is to flip the tow run switch into the tow mode. Anytime you work on your batteries, you want to do that. Then you're going to take a 5 8 socket and take these hold downs loose. And then you're going to take Sometimes it's a half inch, sometimes it's a 9 16 It just depends on what size the battery nuts are. This particular car has 9 16 nuts. We're gonna take all these loose. Pull all the wires off the batteries. And now we are ready to take the batteries out. All right, we've got the batteries out of the car. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this T40 Torx screw out of this plate back here and take these hold down rods out of the battery bucket. And then we're gonna pull the floor mat out. And the reason we do this is so we can run all this wiring for the voltage converter and the gauge underneath the floor mat. And you're going to take a T40. There's four screws that hold the floor mat in place, two on each side. On the back of the panel, you're going to see the factory onboard computer right here. Because we're not using the factory charger or charging system, we're going to need to bypass this onboard computer. And in order to do that, what you've got to do is you've got to unplug the six pin connector from the vehicle wire harness, as you see here in this video. You unplug it, and on the vehicle wiring harness side of the connection, that's that one right there, we're going to take the blue and white wires out of that plug and connect them together. And we'll show you how that's done. We've actually got a video on how to bypass the OBC that shows that's that entire process in full. But we're going to do it again here in this video. So. What we like to do is we cut the six pin connector off of the original OBC and depin the wires. This is what it looks like after it's cut off. And if you look at the back of it, you'll see you've got a yellow, red, brown, purple, white, and blue. And in order to depin this connector, you've got to take this little green wedge lock out of the plug and look down on the bottom of it and you'll see there are these little tabs holding each of these pins in this connector. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a small flathead screwdriver and go in there and release those tabs and pull every wire out of this connector except for the blue and the white. This is what it looks like when we're done. We've got the white and blue jumped together. Everything else is removed. We're going to take this and put the wedge lock connector back in it and lock the pins back in place. And then we're going to go down here and install it by plugging it back into the exact same plug that it was plugged into before. Okay, so we've got it fixed. We got the wedge lock connector plugged back into it. We got the white and blue jumped together. And now we're gonna plug it back into the wire harness where it came from originally. And this will allow the car to run without the OBC. And the reason we do this is because even though we're not using the OBC for charging, a failed OBC can still keep the car from running. And if you're not using the OBC for charging, there's no point in having it on the car 
at all because you don't want something on there that can fail in the future and make the car not run. So we just eliminate it entirely. That way we don't have to worry about it. The next step is to remove the charger receptacle wiring from the back of the onboard computer. And that is nothing more than unplugging the small little gray wire from the back of the OBC and the 10 gauge black wire from the back of the OBC. And then we're going to address the charger receptacle by removing the bezel from the charger receptacle, but we'll get to that in just a minute. There's a little tab on the white on the little white plastic connector that you lift up on to pull the black wire out. And it can get stuck in there. Sometimes it's pretty stubborn. Don't worry about breaking it because you're not going to use it anymore. You've got to lift up on the end of the white tab and pull out with pull the black out of it. Pull the small gray wire off of the back of the receptacle after you get the black wire loose and then fish the entire wire harness out of the back of the battery bucket all the way up to the back of the charger receptacle and we're going to remove it entirely. Next. We're going to take a small screwdriver and release the tabs on the bezel on the charger receptacle by sticking them in the access holes on the sides and prying inward to release the tabs and then pull it out and set it to the side for reinstallation later. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these two T30 screws on the body loose. There's one on each side. There's one there and one there. We're going to take those loose so we can lift up the front of the body and remove the kick plate. After those are removed, we're going to take the three T40 screws out of the bottom of the kick plate. You got one here, one in the middle, and then one on the side. And take all three of those out. After you do this, you can lift up on the front of the rear body and pull the kick plate out from underneath it. Now that we can access the front of the charger receptacle, you can see there's three Phillips screws that need to be removed. Once you get those out, you can pull the entire charger receptacle and all of the wire harness out that was attached to it. And we will not be using this any longer. It's no longer going to be needed. With a T30 Torx bit, you're going to want to remove this screw from the dash and this screw from the dash. And with a T15 Torx, you're going to want to remove this screw from the dash. And we're going to remove this entire panel and drop it down. Okay, so behind the dash, what you're going to see is if you've got brake lights on your car, you're going to have this little 48 volt relay here. And because we're using a keyed voltage reducer, we're no longer going to need this relay. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug all four wires from the relay. And if you look at the wires up close, you're going to see that they're actually, the terminals are two different sizes. These little red ones are 3 16 and these little blue ones are quarter inch. The two little small ones are the ones that turn the relay on and off, and the two blue ones are the ones that carry power through the relay. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect these two blue ones, these two wires with the blue terminals rather, together with a wire connector. And we're going to take these two smaller ones with the red connectors on them. We're going to tape these up where they can't touch anything. And then over here where we've got this gray wire, this is the key switch trigger for the relay. We're going to unplug that. And what that does is that completely isolates the, the main harness from the light harness where they do not touch each other at any point of the car whatsoever. And that's going to be necessary for uh, running the eco battery reducer with your factory light harness without interfering with this brake light relay. Okay, we've got that done right here. We got the wire connected between these two wires. They had the larger terminals on them and we've got these two taped up where they can't touch anything. So now what we're going to do, we're going to drill a hole in the dash 
for the eco battery gauge. And if you look right here, there's a little dot, little indention in the dash. So that's where we're going to start from. That's where we're going to put our pilot bit with our hole saw. We've got a 51 millimeter hole saw that we're going to drill a hole through the dash with and that gauge will fit right into that hole. So slide the gauge through the hole and tighten these nuts on the bracket that comes with the gauge. No need to over tighten these, just get them snug and then that's what the gauge looks like on the outside. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the orange wire from the voltage reducer and we're going to hook it to the back of the key switch. So what we're going to do, we're going to unplug the blue wire and cut it and stick both ends in the blue butt connector and crimp it down and then put the orange wire on the other side. Another way to do it is to get you another one of these connectors right here and put the, both the blue and the orange wire in the same connector and put it back on the key switch like so. So you've got your blue and your orange tied together. So what this does is it turns the voltage reducer on when you turn on the key switch. If you were to put it on the green side, the reducer would stay on all the time. But we don't want that. We want it key triggered. So it's important to put it on the blue side. Okay, we've got the gauge mounted. We've got the dash put back in. We've got the wiring run under the floor mat and up through this hole right here. We've got the wiring for the voltage converter and for the gauge. We mounted the new eco battery charger receptacle in the same location as the factory one and put the bezel back on it. It snaps right on like the factory one does. And now we are ready to mount the battery. We've got the voltage reducer mounted here. And we've got the charger mounted here. Essentially, you can mount either one of these wherever you'd like. This is the plug that comes out of the voltage reducer for your light kit. So we're gonna follow this wire loom and you've got five wires coming out of it. This one, this small loom right here is the orange wire that runs to the key switch. We've already talked about it. The yellow is the positive input. The black small wire is the negative input. And then you've got these larger gauge red and black wires. These are the 12 volt output. And we're gonna tie these into our light harness right here. So this is the pre-existing fuse that was in our light harness. This is the positive. So we're gonna tie that into the red wire and the black wire that runs to our light harness is going to tie into the black negative wire. Most of these cars have a blue wire for the positive. This one actually has a red one, but yours is probably going to be blue, so don't let this uh, confuse you too bad. This is our charger connector. This wire runs directly out of the back of the new charger receptacle and plugs directly into the matching connector that runs into the charger. Very easy. It just snaps in. Okay, so this is what the 60 amp hour battery looks like after it's been set into the battery tray. So you really could put it anywhere you want. It really doesn't matter. There is no right or wrong. Um, you need to make sure that this negative wire will reach the, the terminal. So that's uh, really the only wire that might have any clearance issues at all. This positive wire right here it will reach, you know, no problem. You can actually scoot it over a little bit further and it would still reach, but there are different applications um, for these precedent carts and they, they have different buckets with different floors and different length hardware is required for some of them. So we like to use our own hardware rather than the hardware that comes with the, the battery because we like, to, uh, we like to make sure that the nylock nuts break the nylon and this is where we like to install them. You know, there are other places in this bucket where you can get away with using the hardware that they send, but we like to do it this way. The bolts that we used are 5 16 and they are two inches long. So we've got a washer and a nylock lock nut on each one of them. And if you look right here, you'll see where the floor is actually recessed downward. And we put a spacer in there to keep the battery from caving in when we tighten up that nut. So that's what the 60 amp hour looks like after it's been installed. So now we're gonna hook everything up to it. We'll show you how to do that now. The battery. First thing I like to hook up is the can gauge. It's this little black plug right here. It plugs right into the battery and you've got to screw on the little retaining nut to secure it. 
And if you follow this wire downward, you'll see where you've got two little wires that branch off into these little plugs. These are can plugs. You've got one of these that comes off of your charger. It plugs into either one of these. It doesn't matter which one you use. So plug that in. You've also got this little plug on your charger that you're not going to use, so don't worry about that one. Okay, so as far as your battery terminals go, grab one of the bolts that comes with the battery, and we're going to start with the yellow and black that go onto the voltage reducer. So we start with the smallest wire first, put the bolt through there, then we're going to find the red wire that goes to our charger, then put it through that terminal, and then finally, the red wire that runs the car. We're going to put it through that terminal and then secure it to our battery. Push these terminals downward and then we're going to tighten it up like so. And then we're going to repeat that process on the negative side. So the negative wire for the reducer is this small black wire. Put the bolt through that one, then find the black wire that runs to your charger. Put it through there. And then finally, the black wire that goes through the OBC to the negative post of the controller. Put those down, tighten those up. Finally, we're going to put our terminal covers in place like so. Now we can turn the battery on. By pushing that button right there, you'll see that the, the light turns green. That means the battery is on, it's got power, and the gauge should illuminate as soon as you do that. All right, the gauge is working. Perfect. Now we can test and make sure the car operates. If it does, we'll come back, we'll clean up all of this wiring, and we'll call it done. Okay, with the tow switch in the run position and the key switch on, we put it in reverse, we've got a buzzer, the vehicle moves backwards, put it in forward, and the vehicle moves forward. So that means everything is working, and we can go ahead and clean up the wiring. Okay, we've got the wires out of the way, we've got everything tied in next to the original wire loom up against the battery. And now we're going to check the charger to make sure it works. So we're going to use this eco battery power cord, which is available on our website if you're interested in ordering one of those. It's the correct gauge and an adequate length for charging this battery. And it will not heat up. It's, it's rated for more than enough for this charger. So you don't have to worry about any overheating or anything like that from using too small of a cord. We're going to take the cord and plug it directly into the socket. You see the green light lit up. That means it's got power. Plug it directly in, and now we're going to look at our gauge. Give it a few seconds to turn on, and when it does, you'll see at the bottom of the gauge where there are amps being pumped into the battery from the charger. And that will slowly rise up to 10 or 15 amps or so. And once the charge is finished, it will turn off and it will go back down to zero. You can see it now rising. You see the voltage rising and the amperage at the bottom of the gauge going up. That's exactly what you want to see. That means it's working. When the charger is on, the fan will turn on or it'll start to run. And then this light will flash red until the charge is complete. Then it will be a solid green light when it's finished. Last thing we need to check is to make sure that the voltage reducer is working for the light. So make sure the key is on because it will not work unless the key is on. Pull the headlights on and check the lights. And as you can see, they are on. So those are working correctly. Everything is done. Thank you for watching our video today. If you have any questions about what you've just watched, please feel free to reach out. We're glad to help. There's a link in the description for this battery bundle if you decide that you would like to make a purchase. Thank you and have a great day.